this is definitely a podcast about the Super Bowl, right? Like, so many American Dota fans exist that so many football fans have to exist that we can talk about that we can talk about the Super Bowl and everyone will be like, oh my god, sports, I love those. That's 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 the show this week, right? Like Los Angeles, uh, best city in the world, and 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 Snoop Dogg high at halftime. What more entertainment value could you possibly pack into a broadcast? Right? Right? Okay, right? Okay, but did you watch I, Super Bowl? I feel you like Super Bowl, you? we establish a bare minimum of competency in the topics that we're talking about. Not not a ton of competency, but I didn't watch the Super Bowl. Fuck. <laughs> okay. I didn't Did watch. You? No. Okay. Funny story though. <laughs> Um, I, I was out, part of the reason the podcast is, is, is out late one, sorry, two, uh, I was in Seattle this weekend, hanging out with, hanging out with some people, mostly I had some friends who were having birthdays and stuff, so I, I went to go take a small little, uh, anxiety vacation. Uh, we did karaoke, and I learned that Paramore is not my vocal range. You'd think I would have known that, because Haley Williams is very famous and very good, and I, um, can't keep tone. That's not important. Um, we, <laughs> we I, I was out all day on Sunday, like doing some bike rides. Uh, so I didn't really watch the Super Bowl. But when I got back, uh, I, I watched, I watched like the, the last half of the fourth quarter. Uh, so like the eighth, I watched an eighth of the game and I was like, woo, yay, Los Angeles. Um, but I saw so much interaction on Twitter about how people in our cohort, I think they call them millennials, uh, were really big fans of the halftime show. So I was like, oh, yeah. hey, why don't we just watch the halftime show? So my friends I'm with are like, absolutely, that's great, because the NFL, it was like on the NFL YouTube channel before the game was even over. So we sit down, uh, someone loads up the Roku app, they toss the halftime show on, and I'm like, oh, Shakira I didn't I didn't know Shakira was in this year's halftime show and then we're watching it and we're watching it and like oh shit J-Lo's there and like J Belvin like oh like this is like when is when Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre gonna come out and um my friend's like no 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 don't I they, they must have had extra people on there it must be really long like I clicked I clicked the 2022 Super Bowl um halftime show How did none of you know about <laughs> the details of the Super Bowl show I, kn- I knew who was there I knew that I knew that it was like Dr. Dre and you didn't adjacent. know enough I uh, clearly <laughs> not because, because because there's also Kendrick there there's also 50 Cent there there's also Eminem there yeah there's Mary J. Blige there uh-huh 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 and I was like, okay, so they're coming out, right? But it's been 15 minutes into this halftime show. And then I'm like, can we check the time on this? Like, I, there's like, where's everybody else? And we pause it, and it's like 95% of the way done. And I'm like, Alex, I'm pretty sure this is the wrong halftime show. <laughs> I read the YouTube title, and it says 2020. And I'm like, oh, shit, that makes so much sense because I didn't watch that halftime show. And also, I knew J-Lo wasn't there this year. And also, the whole video was at night, and it was daytime in Los Angeles. Um, so There, there eventually- are a lot of pieces of that that you missed, huh? Dude, it is in. How many people were watching this? <laughs> three. <What> people... <laughs> three people. Three people were watching. None it. of you picked up on. And this. no one was like, "Hey, I think this is an old halftime show." Okay, a couple things. J Lo, oh man, killed it in 2020. Also, <laughs> we went back. <laughs> so we've watched the whole 2020 one before we watched the 2022 one, and um, yeah, I think J Lo was really good. Wrong year. Okay. Did, did, did you know that because you went back and watched that show? I watched this year's. No. Oh. I, 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 have, I, would not have, I, I would not have watched that even if I had an ability to watch the halftime show. <laughs> I don't have like, cable or anything like that. But the uh, no, there's no way I would watch J-Lo and Shakira. No. But I did watch this year's because I like all of the artists that were there. So I was pretty even curious. 50 Plus cent? I saw, I did even see 50 cent? on every... Even Fifty Cent, yes. Okay, okay. As as an artist, yes. I mean, as a human being, he's a real big piece of shit. But uh, he he definitely has some songs that I like. But uh, everybody else, I like a lot more than Fifty Cent. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and uh, and I also saw on Twitter everybody said it was really good. So I figured I'd watch it, and it was. 
It was very good. I, I very much enjoyed it. It was like one of the first halftime shows that I was actually interested in watching. Uh, I don't think there's any other way. Any other one that I was like, oh, I need to be able to watch that. It was like, what? Uh, Were you Coldplay also... Coldplay did one. Oh, Coldplay's I really that. bad. I, I can talk to you about Super Bowl halftime shows. It's it's not good for the podcast. Coldplay's really bad. Um, Prince's, really good. Sure, Weekend, sure. kind of okay. Uh, Katy Perry, top tier. The Left Shark meme still lives on. You can't deny that. Uh, I wish that the Super Bowl halftime show had more Kendrick and less most other people. I can kind of... Uh, uh, no. No, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that? What? I get that it was like about Dre. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem. All those artists I'm, I'm great with. Like I, I love Kendrick as as much as the next guy, but I I uh I think it's really interesting with someone like Snoop Dogg who is like high all the time. Uh, if he gets less high before something as monumental as having to perform the Super Bowl halftime show, like you think he would like be like ten percent more sober. But then today pictures came out of him him smoking a blunt before the halftime show, and I'm like, nah, I was wrong about that. He was just baked, and it's great. I mean, if anything, like, isn't he more likely to get baked in that scenario? If you did have any nerves this late into your career, they're they're certainly gone. If you uh, if you're a frequent smoker and you uh, you know, just just want to vibe, man. You know, I I appreciated that Snoop Dogg did that. <laughs> I I think it made for a good show, regardless. Um, if you want to talk about nerves, if you want to talk about nerves. Uh-huh. I can talk to you about people who didn't have nerves. Do you know who didn't have nerves? Okay. Gaming gladiators, who might be my least favorite. Not team. I don't want to sound biased. I don't want to talk about, you know, my least favorite named organization in a long time. Like, I am so happy for Team Tickles. But do you know how much fun it is to say Team tickles do you know how you know how milk toast vanilla bullshit boring it is to say gaming gladiators like come on okay, so that, already... that is a branding d step aren't, aren't they an nft organization or something like that too something like i'm pretty sure they're a crypto <laughs> organization you know d- don't fact check me on that because like i don't i don't actually know a hundred percent but i heard they're a crypto org which is like uh, what whatever but like gladiators <laughs> I, it, I opened their site and immediately i see earn passive rewards while gaming that's definitely something that's something crypto oriented for sure gladiators gaming gladiators like oh whoa, whoa, whoa. you put a g at the end there game in gladiators game they're gla- gaming oh they're yeah, gaming they're, they're, leave yeah. the g off because they're cool like that <laughs> <sighs> yeah it's a it's it's not a great name uh, then again, Team Tickles was kind of weird at the same time, especially their branding with the laughing. So uh, if they can replace the voice lines uh, due to this, I honestly, that's a that's a win for me. Oh, that's man. the win for me. But yeah, they, o- they owned Western Europe as a liquid fin. So I already talked to Blitz about uh, liquid getting second in the Western European regional finals yeah what insight did he have uh, is that like a different podcast you're gonna share that with me like because i want to you didn't even talk to yeah, me on the yeah, show yeah. about that like, like what's the what's the insight because i haven't called will up and been like hey dude what the fuck happened but like you know i thought about it uh I, I, he said they're they're a little underprepared um so I, I i think they didn't take as many steps as they should have and as a result well you know got second maybe if they had uh taking those extra steps maybe they would have been able to take first maybe not um but either way it didn't seem like he was super disappointed um losing is important what, uh, well i'm curious what you, like as a liquid fan and somebody who is vested in their success like how do you view that because what they got out of it for western europe uh for getting second you get twenty five thousand dollars, which is whatever uh, and the important part is the 130 DPC points first is 250. So they missed out on 120 DPC points. Does that, does that make you feel one way or another at all? 
Uh, it could talk to me again in like six months, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it, it, I, I think the DPC points are more important than like the twenty-five grand. I think because if you think about twenty-five grand, five ways, five grand a person. That's not talking about anybody else, like you know, coaches or staff, right? So, like, I, I don't mm-hmm. think the money on a per person level at at the loveliest guys are playing at are that substantial i think the money for for gladiators is awesome like like i, I think yeah. twenty five thousand dollars matters the extra 25k matters a ton to them and i'm happy for them i'm very happy to see uh another team have success right um i i think that my my thoughts are twofold as a fan as someone who follows western europe dota uh both you know for work and as a fan it is always going to be weird to see a a tournament win that isn't you know uh secret enigma liquid alliance something like that one of those names and i know because i I can hear people thinking right now what about the stuff tundra won at the end of last year like yeah i agree i think that that felt like a bit of an outlier right uh because we're we're so used to so many years of just this dominance of of the top just just the names the top brands right so Mm. First and foremost, they're not in the event, really. <laughs> you know, it's Tundra and Gladiators. And second, Gladiators winning is like... I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are still going, wait, who are these motherfuckers? Um, so that's, that's interesting. If you talk about it from a from a different fan perspective, from, from Joey watching the game's perspective, I don't know, and, and I, I don't follow Dota as closely as I used to. I used to be like pretty decent at like understanding drafts, and that's faded away a little bit. I don't understand uh, what Liquid was scared of or not scared of that allowed the, the Wisp Storm Spirit opening three times. Yeah. Because yeah. they won every time with it, and they and it wasn't there. Like it was it not banned because there was something that had to be banned that we would never know about because of whatever reason. Did they just think that like ah eh, we'll just beat it it's fine and then but like that that the math on that uh, from the sidelines with zero inside knowledge seems a little iffy to me. The, the Io Storm Spirit is is uh, very strong, and they did let it let uh game and gladiators have it back to back i closed out this series game three and four so that was a little curious that is a, a really strong combination obviously they seem to think that they had answers to it but um they some sort of misread um draft misreads happen um they usually just when it comes to like double elimination um long term uh, tournaments usually mm-hmm. those things sort of things are um figured out i think by the time you get to the last day but uh this one definitely seemed like they did not have the right ideas to be able to beat it because they tried two different drafts to be able to beat Ido storm spirit and neither one seemed to work so yeah, yeah and that if was, you count uh, that was a little bit weird and and if you want to extrapolate further you can count uh you know the gaming gladiators played the third time that same day versus og um and og tried an even different strategy against it uh so uh, th- th- there was a lot of attempts that were made to to deal with it, but but sitting there watching, I was like, mm, oh god, I hope this works out. I think it might. Oh no, it's not going to. Uh, ga- game five was was hard to watch, but game game four felt plausible. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Western Europe at this point in time is going to be so 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 scary to to play in since. I think both Game and Gladiators uh, and OG, like one of those teams you're probably expecting to be near the bottom of the pack, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that they both made it into the playoffs and then Game and Gladiators actually takes it over Team Liquid. OG gets a, a spot ahead of Tundra as well, um, who I still think Tundra is, is a very good team. Um, like that is going to be super scary. It's going to be a big test though because we do have... As soon as these playoffs are, are done, we have the next round of regional playoffs that are going to be happening. As soon as that's done, we're going to have the patch. And I think that will be a very big test for OG and Gladiators in particular to see if they can remain relevant, remain in the top four of Western Europe. Um, because it's traditionally like the more experienced teams 
um, will usually pick up uh, newer patches faster, right? Because they've seen the cycle of Dota. They've seen how everything affects everything. And they're going to be able to, to see ahead in that regard. So I think uh, that'll be a big test for them. But if they can stay on top and say like Secret finally manages to, to hit their form, either that or Nigma ends up coming back and looking strong again, um, then you're going to have a very stacked Western European region. Uh, not to mention the teams that are coming up from lowers, which are probably not going to be total slouches. At least one of those is probably going to be strong. So... Yeah, that's um oh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It's uh I know Brames won. And then and then yeah, Chris Brame, Crystal like Crystal teams tiebreaker. is the other one. Yeah. Yeah, the creep wave or I think they actually got a sponsor, but uh, uh yeah, entity yeah. now. Okay. Um I think it's interesting if you talk about the DPC points of it all, um that so so Liquid got first place in the DPC circuit, uh Gladiators got second place and they flipped placements for the regional finals and uh they both came out with 430 points. Mm. Okay. I actually didn't realize that they, they made that even in that regard. Yeah. So so yeah, that it, means it, they're tied up, and it, I guess that means that Boom is the highest rated team out of everybody. They have the most DBC points right now. That is correct, but not by Ooh. much because Boom got deducted points for playing with a stand-in in yeah something. Uh, it de definitely in in their regional final. So so Boom has four hundred and fifty points. Gladiators and Liquid have uh, four hundred and thirty points. Um, oh. And then uh, the only teams that could potentially have more points uh, so far are uh, are will be from the next set, which are your three winners from last time, which is uh, PSG, LGD, Quincy Crew, and Team Spirit. So if they perform yeah. well, they can they can take those top spots. But um, it, it seems like there there's a little bit of a fold starting to be created. But just just a small yeah. one. Just 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 a just a small one. For uh, so I actually watched through the replays of Southeast Asia. Um, I watched some of the Western European replays as well, but I could catch some of it live. So I didn't try super hard to to go back through. But Southeast Asia, I made an effort to go through the replays, and um, Boom and uh, T1 definitely looked like they were a step ahead. Boom, Boom uh, had a stand-in, but it's actually a replacement. They're um, they look to be replacing Tino basically. Because of, uh, I think, a combination of Talon falling apart and 23 Savage. Like, it, basically, it all kind of, like, links together, I think, with Talon. Um, Talon falls apart. Gabby's a free agent. T1 seems to feel like they need to make some sort of change. They kick 23 Savage, pick up Gabby. Um, in return, there there are some, like, other players potentially available. Boom uh, it decides that they're going to bench Tino. And they pick up uh, Jackie, who um, is, I think, definitely an upgrade, at least on paper. T1, you know, like that that one, I think Gabby and 23 Savage are a little bit closer in skills. So that one's a little bit more of a toss-up for me. But um, either way, it seemed like both Boom and Team 1 were a step ahead of everybody else. Um, and then Fnatic, and surprisingly, SMG. I thought SMG was going to get fourth, but um, Fnatic continues to kind of struggle. Um, they managed to take a game off of T1, but then they got 2 0 by SMG. So, not really sure. I thought Fnatic would, would show up to this playoffs, but it turns out they, they didn't. I, they're a strong team, so I'm still expecting them to eventually look good. I think and then for South America, I think only to watch the oh. finals, to be honest. <laughs> I uh I think that Jackie is a giant winner not just because you know he is suddenly on boom but also he was on mode of trust who got relegated, so mm -hmm. he 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 somehow found himself like going from what could have been a disastrous year to yeah uh, being recognized and picked up by by the team that has the most DPC points. So, you know, kudos to Jackie. I, I how, how long is his player career? It's, it hasn't been playing on serious teams for like more than a couple years, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he's only been around for a, a few years at most, I think. The um, 
definitely a big win for him. I'm still not like totally set on him as being one of the uh, one of the best carries uh-huh. um, in Southeast Asia. Um, I think 23 Savage and Gabby, I would both put ahead of him. Which so I was a little bit surprised when there were the roster shuffles was kind of going around. I figured 23 Savage would end up on boom, um, but seems seems not to be the case they pick up jackie instead i have no idea what the decision making behind that all that is uh there's a big question of where anna's gonna end up as well right now as he seems to be because i keep on seeing these like league screenshots and stuff it seems like uh to me anyway that he's trying out for various rosters uh and i have to imagine some of his skill and caliber probably has his choice of where he wants to go so and he, he may just end up not anywhere if he doesn't feel like it's the right fit right i I think it's he's someone who he he's looking at winning another ti you know so if he doesn't really believe in the roster there's no point in joining somebody yeah he he can he can bounce around um i forget that boom you know uh, a lot of people watching dota might not realize it but they're like you know they have a real league of legends roster in the region they have a Valorant team that's competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they also have a PUBG team um, that may have played at at Worlds. So like, uh, so sometimes for me, I, I look at their organization name and go like, oh, like you know, are are they like one of the up and coming like you know yeah. Southeast Asian regions? Like you know, there's there's T1 and there's Fnatic, but but uh, I, I think that we're gonna you know boom stock in general just rising. Uh, not just in Dota, but beyond Dota, which which is cool to see another another player kind of play heavy in the scene. Um, you said you only watch the finals of uh of South America, and I'll be honest with you, that's a little bit more than I watched at all. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I know. <laughs> Whoa! I know. Well, how could I? I I had a busy weekend. I was out and about. I only got to mm-hmm, watch you know the mm-hmm. boys play. And again, that Western Europe schedule, like those five a.m. games really sucks really someone someone go deal with that for me um beast coast dropped one game on on way to to winning uh south america and i think that some of the narrative around beast coast since they you know didn't have the best uh majors last year since they kind of uh seemingly faltered very heavily at ti and then also didn't win their dpc season even though they've can maintain the same roster it's been like hey what's up with them like it's kind of confusing like are they for real are they not for real can they do what they used to do um and it seems like this tournament is a little bit of them saying oh yeah hey we're still here don't forget about us because i think people have been forgetting about them yeah i I don't know what happened with their ti performance because um they ended up in that best of one against alliance and they seem like uh i don't know man they seem like they just didn't really care I, i don't know what was going on with them but they uh i almost expected a roster change after the way things went there but they um yeah, they they're still good. They got third in DPC, um, so obviously below what was expected. But going into this playoffs, I was like, you know, Beast Coast is a team that turns up, right? They turn up at lands, they turn up at TI, they turn up, um, you know, at playoffs. Like, I think they they are still for me anyway the number one or number two South American team. And so I my my bet was them making grand finals and and maybe first. Uh, mm-hmm. My favorite was either them or Thunder Predator or Thunder Awaken, depending on how their sponsorship <laughs> with uh, who whoever that is who who who's the Predator laptop line. Anyway, whoever that is, that that, se- that seems to come and go all the time. But uh, yeah, so th- those were my two favorites, uh, mostly because I've said this a number of times. I think because is super good. And uh, they match up against each other in the upper bracket. And I saw some of this. Um, Beast Coast did manage to take that 2-1. And I was like, okay, Thunder's going to come right back. And then Infamous in the lower bracket managed a 2-0 Thunder Awaken. So a little disappointed by that. Um, and made for a really disappointing finals because then Infamous goes into the grand finals. Had got, they had already been 2 0 by Beast Coast before, and then they got 3 0 And mm-hmm. I think I actually did not watch game three because after watching game two and game one, game one was Beast Coast's solid win. Game two should have been a win for Infamous, 
But then I think they threw it and Beast Coast, they, they managed to push the game like it was like a 60 minute game or something. And Beast Coast finally wins. And I was like, yep, that's it. I, I said halfway through the game, I said, if Infamous does not win this game, I'm not going to watch the third game because it's going to be a 3-0. Because it was one of those kind of leads where I think you tilt. You, you, you're going to look back at that game. You're going to look at a 2-0 score line and be like, we should be one run right now. I, I think it takes a lot of mental fortitude and a really good uh, team and atmosphere for you to be able to reset off of what was what should have been a game to win for Infamous that turned into a very long, drawn-out game to loss. Well, I pulled up the Dota buff, and uh, it says, Infamous advantage, 46 minutes, 20,000 net worth. And I mean, not looking at anything else, that seems that seems like a tilter because they lost less than twenty minutes later. Um, it looks like they didn't yes. have anything to and, deal and with. They should Phantom have won Lancer? sooner. Yeah, it looks like they didn't yes, have anything to they, deal with. They should Lancer. have actually won the game even sooner. They should have won around like basically they threw the game somewhere in like I think it was a Roshan pit or something like that. Twenty five thirty minutes. I think they tried to force a, a a bad Roshan or something like that, and they just threw the game. And, and it ends up going late against a Phantom Lancer. It's just no good. So, I mean, they, they managed to, like, still cobble together some good fights back and forth. But I was I was convinced that Beast Coast was going to take it 3-0 once they, they won game two. Do you like the, the snappier pace of some of these Dota games? Uh, the more that I've been, you know, clicking through match results, like, the more that I've been seeing game timers that are just very solidly in the 20-minute mark. Yeah, yeah, I think um, a lot of games are over by 30 minutes, for sure. I, I, what I ultimately, what I like the most about the current pace is that if it gets to 60 minutes, if it gets to 60 minutes, you pretty much never see it go to 70 minutes. Like, the game will close out, and I think Tier 5 items are a nice touch. And I know a lot of people, like, a lot of people like to talk about, like, oh, they're so OP, and they're, they're, there's, like, they're too big of an impact, but that's kind of the point. If the game goes an hour long, um, that means something went wrong one way or the other, right? Like, one team probably should have won, uh, but, you know, they slipped up and, and didn't manage to finish out the game. Like, one team probably had enough of an advantage they could have closed out the game, but they made a mistake. And now the game is going to go super long. And so I, I think, I, you know, when it goes, when it finally does reach 60 minutes, I, I think it's a nice touch of just throwing in some real big chaos that is going to make sure that the game does end. Because you get such powerful tools combined with the fact that people are getting Aghanim Scepters and shards that they can eat and you can eat a Moon Shard and Roshan's dropping a billion items. Mm -hmm. Like, something is gonna go through, you know? Um, we talked we talked a little bit last week about this, uh, so I don't, I don't want to rehash too much, but this upcoming weekend, that leaves us with Eastern Europe, China, North America. Is there one of those that you have your eye on more than, than the others? Like, what are you excited about this, for this weekend? Um, well, I think I'm probably going to do some coverage of North America on my channel. Um, so if people want to watch that, um, just because, like I said, I haven't been casting um, as much as I would like to. And it seems like at least one of the seasons I'm, I potentially will not be working. Um, and it's also looking like I may not get any casting. Like... <laughs> I don't know at all. It's looking like, but based off of like my my uh, early discussions with various people, so uh, I got to get some casting in because this is just no bueno. So uh, I think I'm I'm actually going to cover the NA playoffs, um, and I think I'll see if SVG wants to join me for that uh, or whoever else is around. I'm sure like Jack KBBQ will will jump in for some non Quincy Crew games, but. Uh, uh, other than that, I will definitely go through the, the Chinese replays at some point, for sure. Just because um, I'm really interested to see what happens in China. Eastern Europe is, I feel like, eventually Eastern Europe is going to get really interesting through the rest of the season. I'm not just sure at the playoffs right now. 
Right now, I think it's like kind of similar to Southeast Asia, where I think there's two teams that are a step above everybody else. Or in this case, I guess Eastern Europe, it's Team Spirit, who's like two steps of everybody else. Puck Champ, who's one step ahead of everybody else. And then VP, Hellraisers, Navi, they all kind of occupy a, a similar space for me. So maybe by the end of the season, it'll be really super tight and compelling. But right now, it just seems like Team Spirit's going to run over everybody and Puck Champ has momentum. So... Uh, I'm probably going to also watch the most, um, what do we call it? China. That's what it is. I'm going to watch the most China just because these start times are pretty advantageous yeah. for someone who's like wanting, I really like going to bed watching Dota. I feel like it's like soothing. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to, to those games. If I can make my sleep schedule a little bit more degenerate. Uh, I, I'm also, I, I'll be here on the stream for you and SVG to cast North America. Like surely that'll be, that'll be a good time. And those games are also, in theory, at normal human times. But they're, like, always during work hours, and there's, like, meetings, and, like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I had a meeting for the first time recently. You had a meeting? The, I had a business meeting. A yeah, I don't have too meeting? many of those lately. Yeah. I had, to, I had to talk about what's going on with the rest of the DPC and stuff like that. So, But, uh, yeah, it was, like, 7 a.m. my time. I was just, like... <laughs> I don't work a nine to five to avoid stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I, I'm interested, but I also don't. And like we're uh, normally we're doing we're doing this show live, uh, which is the thing that we almost never do. So I get the luxury to to, to 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 poke literally ever uh, the luxury to like poke around and ask questions and like delete stuff later. But that's that's harder to do right now. So I don't know how much more I could ask you about uh, your work schedule. No, uh, pretty much all I can say is that I may not be working one season. That that is the potential situation that I'm sitting at, but. Other than that, I can't really say a whole lot else. But, Does that mean... Yeah, so I'm trying to fix that. Because <laughs> I, I can't afford... Like, I don't want to take a season off. It's just not good. Yeah, for a bunch of reasons. But if you do... I, I feel like that, I'm also like... good enough that I shouldn't have to, so... <laughs> well, I'm a biased no. party to comment on that. Or like, who am I to say, yeah, buddy, you're the best. I mean, even if it is, like, close <laughs> to being accurate. Like, I mean, that, that makes me sound like uh, yeah, a fuck, yeah. right? Um... So what you're saying is, is that if you have a season off, we can like we like go to Cabo or something, like that's vacation yeah, time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Okay, well then maybe the 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 third season is what I'm looking at. I'm trying to figure out what to do for the third season. Oh, so then it'll, it'll be warm. Yeah. It'll be summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you know, if if that happens, which again I'm uh -huh. very don't want to happen, that would be. The worst thing I could think of next to, you know, like war or genocide or something. If if if, if that horrible scenario happens, I'll I'll like look up some flights to Mexico or something. You know, just I'll just I'll, right. I'll just Sounds make some good. suggestions. Um, <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to uh, hit on this week, or, sh or should we uh, should we toss over to Patreon questions? Uh, well, we just have um, the fact that ESL announced that they're going to be doing the second major. Oh, so, in where? I I, Sweden. We're going back to Sweden. We're gonna try again. <laughs> it's, this it's, is round. This is round three, actually, because TI10 was originally supposed to be in Sweden, and then the new dates of TI10 in Sweden, and then Sweden said no, no TI here. So we ended up doing in Romania. So this is the third attempt to get a Valve event. <laughs> in sweden over the last three years oh boy what uh like like say stockholm say marina like all that stuff or is it some, is it somewhere different in yeah i read something somebody said it's like um a hockey arena so it's not i don't think it's a normal arena that we've been to in the past for like dream hacks and stuff so um yeah i, I don't know that much about where it's at but yes stockholm do you remember the video at the end of ti Nine? Yeah, like the mayor yeah, the was there or some shit. Mayor She's like, Stockholm. Welcome to Stockholm, everybody. I love gaming. Look at the big arena. We love Dota. That's how. That's what I remember. There was like beauty shots or some shit. There was like drone yeah. B roll. ESL should have bought that footage and just replayed it for their <laughs> for their announcement of the uh, Stockholm major. But yeah, that's where the second major is going to be. Hopefully, it will be the uh, first 
major event with an audience since uh, NDL Chengdu, which was uh, 2019, just before 2020 happened, right? I think yeah. So. Yeah. That's what. Are we the last esport to not have a crowded audience? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Or one of the top three. Everybody else has surpassed us in that regard. Well, I don't. So. so, so both of the League of Legends international events didn't, but they have had regional ones with it. Valorant didn't. I don't think Valorant ever has actually. Um, oh, really? Okay. Uh, I think Counter Strike had a LAN with people. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's close. It's close. It's still. I I don't think this is like totally a Dota problem because there are the people who haven't done this yet. Is, is there a reason to still be trepidatious about it even happening, or do we finally feel like like this is the one? Like, what could go wrong at this point? Is it is it is it travel issues? Maybe. Is it another different strain of COVID that pops up? I guess we can always be concerned about that. Is it yes. like like what could go wrong this time? I, I mean, I'll just say that I have been in Sweden for all of these DPC seasons, and uh, my expectation is that it absolutely will happen, because for the last year and a half, they don't seem to have given a fuck otherwise. So, uh, yeah, I think it would take a, a new, new uh, really bad strain to come out and make things really bad. Uh, but I, I will just say, every single time I'm there in, in Sweden, it's, you know, they they don't really seem to to care that much that it's going on. So I bet I assume we're gonna happen. We had the CS:GO major happen uh, there. I believe the that uh, we've got Kanavitze going yeah. on right now. Now it's going like, to now. <laughs> yeah, it's group stage is going on now. So we haven't actually seen an audience just yet. Uh, and I think they're also CS:GO. I think might actually be having an event at the same time as TI. Something like that. So, or sorry, not TI. Uh, the next major. So yeah, that that'll be interesting. Right. Um, I, I'm I'm mildly worried about visas and traveling more so than I am COVID at this case. I think that there could potentially be a world where some people in some regions are having some issues. Um, kind of in Southeast Asia. I think we'll uh, anybody from like Singapore. I think may have a hard time. Um, and China is the, the obviously the, the really rough one because we saw what happened to the teams who got COVID at TI is that they were stuck there forever. And they, you know, they eventually got back, but it took a really long time. So I'm not sure if that is still a possibility that if they get, uh, if they potentially get COVID uh, and what the rules are. Because I know there, there were rules where like they couldn't leave the hotel ever um because otherwise it would prolong their the stay that they had to have in romania stuff like that so well yeah. i i i'm i'm like excited but like a little worried but like mostly just excited because it feels like it can be a watershed moment and also i, th I think that the communication that we saw that didn't happen with the first major is being addressed by, you know, uh, what, 10 weeks out being like, Hey everybody, this is the plan. <laughs> so I don't yeah, think people are yeah. going to be too, too anxious behind the scenes about it. So that, that, that sounds good. That sounds good. It probably means that the third major has also already been figured out as well. I, I have to imagine that like valve is probably, hit those both of those up already so yeah uh, they probably have already decided their tournament organizer and we'll just have to wait to see where that's going to be and who it is and stuff like that but i have to imagine those plans have already put into place whereas the first major post ti is always kind of like a mess i feel like uh and it being covid that that short term notice is not really ideal do you want for tournament organizers do you want to make a prediction on on what region the third major's in um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess I don't know enough internationally of what regions are open enough. Um, I don't feel like it's going to be North America. Uh, so that kind of just leaves either 
Eastern Europe slash Russia, which I kind of doubt given the current political situation going on there, uh, or China and Southeast Asia, knowing Southeast Asia is a little bit easier to get into. So uh, I'm not sure what the, the case is in getting in and out of China right now. So I am really curious where TI is going to be. From a, from a personal perspective and trying to plan out the rest of my year and work stuff. You don't think they're going to go back to, to, to Sweden? <laughs> yeah, I, I almost feel like they're going to do Europe again just because they'll be like, we kind of owe you guys a, a, a TI that you can actually attend. Will they do you know? two of the three lands this year in Sweden? Is, 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 uh, is yeah, that like, is that a game breaker? They, they could. I, mean, I, I feel like that those are two different decision making processes though where valve does ti and where the the tournament organizer they partner with does their majors i feel like are, are two separate conversations that i'm not sure if valve would really consider one over the other but i could I, be wrong i guess yeah i just i just want to know when and where it's happening because I don't even think we know if it's like an August thing or an October thing, right? Uh, I think based off the DPC, we have to assume October, right? Because um, DPC, Dota 2... Liquipedia. The, doesn't the final major end sometime in like late July or something like that? So, so League 3 ends in late July. So you can probably conclude that the third major is beginning of August. Right. And that and that that's like you know ten days a week. It ends the middle of August, so you could probably realistically do TI in September. Yeah, yeah. September, I think September October. would be more ideal, uh, just because it would give us more time to fit in. I do not like this whole. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of complaints about the DPC setup already from the teams and how they want to have like more games and stuff like that. And I agree with that. Um, and I think it's made even worse by having a Christmas break between the DPC seasons. So uh, I I would like it in September because that maybe means we can actually get a DPC season in in November, finish it up early December, have a Christmas break, come back DPC second season, go on. Still, you have the whole Chinese New Year problem um that happens in that situation but uh, i don't know it's gonna be a problem some way yeah it is oh man i didn't uh, you know i forgot that we were doing this live and i could have looked at the chat the whole time but i just chose to mm. ignore all of them i didn't i didn't want any of them to ruin my vibe did anyone say anything did interesting? feel different you know, those of you guys who are listening you're like what the fuck they're doing it live yeah that was a we just decided randomly pretty much because joey joey said he'd be back around five mm -hmm. and i was like ah eh, that's right in the middle of my stream so maybe maybe we just do the podcast live and uh he was not back around five so but you were still streaming <laughs> You were, you were, I was because I was just waiting. My check and verify. I was just like, "Is Joey dead?" <laughs> he said he'd be around five. Maybe I'll just I'll eat dinner and wait for Joey. And then I ate dinner and I was like, "All right, I guess I'll play one more game." <laughs> and then and then one more game. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one more game, man. Um, <laughs> if anybody in chat who doesn't support you know you in chat because they're not a sub because they're like oh no i don't want to do that they could support you better on patreon mm. so get this do you know mm. that twitch takes like half of a subscription yeah that's true twitch they takes do. like I half of a subscription and if you wanted to just give cap maybe me five dollars a month <laughs> if you did it on patreon do you know how much patreon takes of that how much like less than 50 cents so think so so think i still have to split it with you though and right now, some of that money is going to our our editor, who I don't even... Do we have an editor for the show? We can talk about that later. We've, we've been... Are you doing all the editing still? <laughs> yes, but we're making more money that way. Um, it's, okay. it's, it's a conversation for later. I refresh the chat, actually. I don't see anything now. Uh, but if you support us on Patreon, uh, which we would both thank you for and give you a bunch of kisses... 
Mm-hmm. Those, those are me giving you kisses. Um, you can also ask questions at the end of the show, uh, like this one that Cap is going to read, because I think it's in a pinned message, potentially. If you scroll up, there was two in one block. Doll- I can get my phone out. I can re- uh. I can redo it. You just got to scroll up a little oh, bit. it's fine. I'll uh, find it. Okay, he's going to find it. It's okay. It's because I-, I popped it out. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I found it. I found it. Uh, Sean Chivers? 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 C-H-I-V-E-R-S. How do you think you say that? I, I'm just like as fuck, dog. I don't know how to read. Shiver me timbers. Sean Shiver me timbers says, "Hey chaps, I love watching Dota, but I haven't been able to hit the find match button for a week because of, for lack of a better term, Q anxiety. I was wondering if either of you have ever suffered from it, and if you've found ways to overcome it. Big fan of the show. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Thank so you, Sean. I have I've been asked this question a lot, Joey. So I want to hear your take. Have, do you have you ever experienced Q anxiety? I feel like no, because of your play style. Do you want to expand on that for another second? What the fuck is my play style? What? I, I just can't imagine you being like, oh, like I might lose MMR when you're going to go farm ancient stacks with Necrophos. You know, like I, I feel like your mind is at ease when you do that strategy. It's punching down. That's a, it's punching down. <laughs> um, I used to get really bad Q anxiety when I played StarCraft. Oh, okay. Uh, I used to get really bad Q anxiety when I'd play StarCraft to the point where when I would get close to a rank or get a new rank, I would be like, fuck, man, like, I'm like one loss away from being on the edge of a different badge. What am I going to do? These ladder points are so important. Uh, and that was that was that was really hard. Um, and I think that I actually listened to to enough people tell me to just get out of my own head people like you know at day nine some other some other starcraft people uh that was just like oh yeah i think i might just be being silly and i kind of willed myself out of it uh under the guise of like oh come on joey like you you're either gonna play the game or you're not gonna play the game and if you're letting this be a barrier from you enjoying the game then you should probably reevaluate a big picture if you want to play the game in the first place because if, if, if the stress of mmr ladder points elo what have you is such a detriment that you can no longer enjoy the thing that you that you like a lot then maybe you should just like reevaluate and and i did that and I decided that I liked playing the game a lot more than I should, in theory, be caring about MMR. And when I was climbing uh, Dota Ladder back in, oh my god, it's like over five years now, holy shit. When I, when I, when I was climbing Dota in like 2016, uh, like 2015, 2016, probably the most seriously, um, I, I started with that because I would... I would get anxious about um, losing MMR, which is like the thing mm. that everybody gets, you know, anxious about. And I decided that um, if I had the self control to stop myself after two losses, then I can never lose more than fifty a day. And really, it helped that I had other stuff to do. I had friends. I was in school. Like, I wasn't just beholden to playing Dota. But I feel like if I, if when I set a limit on myself that I can walk away from, then I was less worried about it because I would never be spiraling. Mm. Um, it's a, I think that's a good rule. That's mm-hmm. a pretty good rule. What was the highest rank that you had in StarCraft and what was the highest rank you had in Dota? Uh I was I was a Diamond Protoss player in StarCraft and I was a like a 5k I'm lying it was like 49. I was like a 5k Dota player uh in <laughs> in 2016. Uh, okay. which like I don't know what that inflates to now but like in my head I still think that's pretty decent. It's yeah. definitely yeah. Like, you would still be you would still be top one percent of the player pool, if not much higher than that for five k at that point period of time. I think that was the same period of time that I was probably six six point five k. Um, yeah. when I got to like seven k in twenty sixteen or something like that, um, I was like top one hundred NA. 
I think I was like rank 80 or 70 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I reached 8K last two or three years, uh, or last year, I guess, the um, that was top 300, I think, Europe. So there, there's some like context for you. So you're definitely in the top 1%. What, how, how much was uh, Diamond? Because you weren't grandmasters, but I assume diamond. There, there, there was there was masters in between at some point in time. I, oh, okay. I I I was diamond before there was masters, or before there was grandmasters. Okay. One of them. So like I, but like I grinded. Um, I I feel like I I played a lot of Dota before I played ranked Dota, but I grinded Starcraft from like bronze one. Um, and and like a lot of my uh, my free time was spent grinding Starcraft. I think that made me a lot better of a Dota player, also in general. I think that 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 a lot of that kind of matriculates to each other. Um, but yeah, so, sometimes. Would you say you were still top one percent? I don't think so. No, okay. I, I I don't think so. I, I think that they were much better Starcraft players, and I, I I think that proportionally I was a higher ranked Dota player in North America than Starcraft when Starcraft was like peaking. Yeah. Um. How, what, what would you do? You've you said you've answered this question a lot, so I, I assume that you have like a like you know advice in your head that you've just just blasted into streams oodles of times. No, I just braid people for having queue anxiety in the first place. I think if I've never I've never had queue anxiety. Like maybe I've come close to that when I'm like just the thing is is, is it could really only possibly happen uh, when I went five k to six k. Uh, which I, I, th I think that was pretty quick. So I, I don't think I had any anxiety there. 6K to 7K, uh, which I remember like, yeah, I was like, I really wanted to get it. Um, and I, I do remember, I think like the final game to get 7K, Forev carried, uh, Forev carried our team pretty heavily. So I played one more game just to like, you know, make sure that I could do, still do it. And I did, I won that game. Uh, and then 7k to 8k, which honestly, I like I climbed so quickly that it was just kind of whatever. But I think the the biggest thing to, to think about is that like, honestly, chances are like you, you were diamond and you were 5k, right? And you were, no offense, you were still dog shit compared to like the actual pro and semi pro players. Right? Oh, horrible, horrible. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not like you're you're making any money off of it anytime soon. It's good to have goals and accomplishments and that sort of thing. Um, but I made money playing like, collegiate Dota. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, sure. You beat up on some college kids. Good work. The <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I think the the thing is is like in the grand context of things, you, like even if you get that last hundred or five hundred even MMR, you are still an ant compared to the giants out there um so it's not like you're gonna be making money off of it anytime soon or anything like that um and ultimately like if you end up losing games what's what is ultimately going to happen with that you if you drop mmr what is going to happen your games are going to become easier right if you are truly are like the 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 mmr that you should be if you really believe you're a 7K, 8K, 4K player, right? If you jump down to 3K, the games will be very easy. And you're going to own. And you're going to be really good. And, and you're going to look really good. And it's going to be a lot of fun destroying people. So just keep that in mind. That's, uh, that's always been my advice. It's like, ultimately, like, whenever I lose a bunch of MMR, I'm always just like, whatever. Games are going to be super easy now. And they kind of are, to be honest. Like, yeah, sure, it's frustrating playing with, like, people who are, like, much worse than maybe I want them to be. But it also gives me a lot more power in the game. I'm able to exert my skill in the game a lot more when I'm playing a 7K average game versus a 9K average game. A 9K average game, yeah, I, it hurts my ego because I'm so much worse than everybody else, <laughs> you know? That I'm just, like, I'm just trying not to feed, guys. I'm just trying to do enough competent things that they don't yell at me because these guys are like pro and semi-pro players so it's like I, the things that i'm doing they just think i'm stupid because i'm so much worse than them you know so i'm just trying to 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 be the bare minimum of competent and it's not a great feeling uh but you know when i play like a 7k or 6k average game like 
I can stomp through some games and feel really good. So, and isn't that why you play the game to feel good, to have fun? I think the uh, therapist in me just wants to acknowledge that, like, uh, anxiety is real and if you are feeling anxious you should like treat it seriously and maybe that's bulldozing through it maybe that's trying to sit down with yourself and understand like what about it is giving you you know um th- 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 those feelings maybe it's dota in the first place maybe it's healthier to not play maybe maybe it's relation to other life events maybe it's a bunch of other things right so i i would just be like hey uh you know try and play games to have fun yeah. And if you're not having fun grinding ladder on Dota, maybe play with friends. Maybe play some Ag's Labyrinth. Maybe load up a game on your Switch. Um, because, you know, th- th- think of things holistically. Um, I will say that, um, so, so somebody in chat asked that, uh, like, what if you are part of the, like, what if you are an elite group? What if you are, like, one of those guys who is a pro or semi-pro? Uh, or what if you're just trying to go pro? Uh, and I guess I don't... I, like I could sympathize a little bit, but I don't have a ton of sympathy because ultimately I was that person, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I was somebody who tried to go pro. Uh, I played competitively in Dota One, in Heroes of New Earth, and Dota Two, right? So there was like different all three games. I I played at a pretty high level, but was never close to anywhere near the top, right? Um, but I, I did try and I, like, I enjoyed scrimming and I enjoyed being on a team and, and, and I did those sort of things. Um, you know, like I, I can still reference the fact that I played with monkeys forever as a stand in, uh, cause they, they needed somebody for like the rest of a tournament, uh, or like, it was like a period of like two or three months. I played with root gaming and we played a, <laughs> a game against the old fanatic with like Trixie and No Tail and them. And we played a, a Pudge Beastmaster Chen lineup where you could do the fountain hooking. Uh, and we did that to Fnatic. And I think they hated us. I think <laughs> I, I actually asked No Tail what's about that. He's like, do you remember that game? And he's like, oh yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember at one point in time, they were inside of their base because they were scared to come out because the fountain hook was just such a powerful tool. Um, right. But like, so I tried to go pro, but ultimately I realized at some point in time, like I did not perform to the level, uh, that I needed to in order to play professionally. And I recognize that about myself. And like some people, maybe they, they, that is something they can recognize and, and get over. But ultimately I decided that I just could never be a pro player in that regard. And I gave up on that dream and instead I became a commentator and things are great, you know? So um it's not the worst thing in the world for things not to work out the way you want them to um there's always other avenues so if you just are going you you hit a wall and you can't actually like you find that you would get performance anxiety or something like that maybe it's just um maybe maybe you're just not the kind of person to be a professional dota 2 player or whatever it is you know i don't i don't get stage fright or anything I, i don't get stage fright or performance anxiety when i cast you know, I, I feel like I do a great job in the clutch moments there. So obviously I can do something under pressure. It just seems like Dota, isn't it? I never got anxiety either playing competitive sports or being on camera, uh, which makes me more mm-hmm. interesting to wonder like why I got it so bad playing StarCraft. And it's probably mm-hmm. because I was like, Guys, I'm gonna go to MLG and I'm gonna fucking make it to pools and I'm gonna like go destroy <laughs> cats and huck. Like that's probably because like even if I wasn't true to myself, like the about about that belief, I might have thought that was the case. Um, and I mm-hmm. think that it might have been easier for me to not have that same anxiety with Dota once I thought about it and like acted on it more because I never once envisioned myself as someone who could be like a competitive Dota player. Um, yeah. That doesn't mean that I didn't want to be competitive in the sense of having high MMR, like being better than ever people, competing in collegiate leagues and like doing well. Like that was all important to me. I wanted to play, but I knew that I was never going to be no tail pretty quickly, nor did I want to be either. I think part of me wanted to compete in StarCraft, but I've never wanted to be like, dude. 
Dota outside of collegiate stuff. I will say anybody who who cares that much about their MMR, I highly suggest that they play on in some like amateur leagues. Um, you know, like the the Reddit uh, Dota League, or there's other amateur leagues. There's collegiate leagues for Dota and stuff like that because it is like a very rewarding experience, um, and it also will probably give you some context of like the difference between any kind of official match and like your ranked games um because there are a lot bigger stakes for your official match um even if it's just like a couple hundred bucks or whatever it's a lot different when you're playing on a team and you like Dude. don't want to disappoint the people that you're playing with or you want to beat the enemy team because you think they're dog shit you know it's like there's a lot of reasons for the it. feeling of playing dota for money is so different than the feeling of playing dota because you just queued up and you're in your underwear and it's like 11 o'clock at night it, it is it is <laughs> yeah. so mentally different what it does to you when you're like mm -hmm. oh shit this is a competition i got people that i want to beat and win because there's a prize i got my teammates who are my friends most of the time who are relying on me to perform and in my case draft like oh oh it's a really good high. It's it's a really good high that I would recommend. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's good. And again, I think it'll give you some some like better idea of context, the greater context of things. And I think it'll also give you a taste of whether or not you like can actually thrive in that environment or not. Give you things to work on. So, yeah, that is our answer to the. P Puma what? <laughs> P P Uma what? There we go. We did it. It's an acronym for it's an acronym for something. Patreon.com slash side poll if you want to support the podcast. Uh thank you very much, everybody, for hanging out with us. We'll be back next week, probably on time with another show. Uh, uh maybe not streamed, probably not streamed. Who knows about that one? Uh and uh, th thanks everybody on the stream who hung out with us. I'm convinced so there's like a discrepancy I'm seeing between the number of people who claim to be here versus the number of people who are bothering to try and communicate with us right now. But like, you know, not to call anybody out, but you're like, thanks for everybody who was, you know, talking to us, even if we weren't engaging back with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And join, join the Discord. Don't forget to join the Discord that we have. We actually talk to you guys. Uh, I, I like talking to my Discord community quite a bit. Um, I, I, I enjoy that a lot more than I expected to. So I'm way more that. active in the side pull chat than I ever thought I would be. Uh, yeah. Because I, I find it, it, it's like a nice little escape sometimes during the day. It's like, ooh, people want to talk about stuff. Yeah. I have an opinion. People have interesting questions. And I've got opinions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Until next week. I did that because because someone gave the critique that like you know we should close out the show and like I and like I I, I just want them to know that like I I, I took I took that to heart I took that to heart you didn't do the dead, dead I did yeah I, I I didn't do a dead drop but like I still think I that thought, like I, well I expected you to pull out like a guitar or a flute and you know like do the musical in outro for um, us. Maybe, maybe next time I'll get a recorder but like you know I'm, I'm still I I feel like just cutting <laughs> off the show is honestly the better way to do it. <laughs>